Yeah. Full commitment, full dedication. Even though my mind sometimes wants to play tricks on me, I know the work I've done. I know what I have to do. I, I'm, I'm gonna beat this guy. I, uh, I can't wait, man. I get emotional when I think about it because I think about the result. What's gonna feel like the relief? And that's why I get emotional, but I'm gonna fuck this guy up, man. Uh. By the end of UFC 281, Israel Adesanya was labeled a broken man. And ultimately, it showed itself to be so true that he could not withstand the onslaught that Alex Pajeda put on him in the fifth round. Now, these guys have a lot of history. Pereira's beaten him three times. Laughter and mockery followed him the moment he exited the cage that night. And as he disappeared backstage, the MMA fandom whispered with a fair amount of glee. You know how much, uh, how yeah, much yeah. the mental game is, right? Yeah. You got two wins over a guy, one of them a devastating knockout. Is that all a race? It was all over for him. Israel Adesanya, widely regarded as one of the greatest middleweights of all time, was dealt a soul-crushing defeat by an old nemesis, someone he knew very well but could never overcome. The old demon had done it again, this time inside the octagon with the world watching. Israel, one of the most polarizing personalities in the game, was no longer the champion. And the backlash began the moment the referee called the end of the fight. 0-3 against one guy across two realms of combat and knocked out twice. Losing sucks. I hate fucking losing. You don't recover from something like that. It was a real-life horror movie, an eldritch nightmare in reality. And according to most, this was going to fester further and haunt Israel Adesanya for the rest of his life. But nightmares don't last forever, do they? In 2020, Israel Adesanya was on top of the MMA world. I'm a champion. I'm a champion. I'm building my legacy. Understand that. As the undisputed middleweight champion and one of the more popular stars in the UFC, he told us all that he would climb to the top in style and he delivered on every promise. He defeated another elite fighter in Robert Whitaker to become the king and went on to defend his championship against the best fighters on the planet, rarely in trouble and always victorious by the end. At 185, he was untouchable. His only loss was at 205, but that didn't matter because no middleweight in the UFC was going to take the belt off of him. However, outside the UFC... Easy work for Porter Pereira! That's that completeness! In the kickboxing world, Alex Pereira had done it all. By 2021, Poitain was regarded as one of the best combat sports athletes of all time. As he was not just a champion in glory kickboxing, he was a double champion and the only one in the history of the promotion. Dude is a legitimate ancestor of people yeah. that were like tribal folks in Brazil, in the Amazon. That's yeah. superior genetics, son. In MMA, he was known as the guy who knocked out Israel Adesanya, beat him by decision the first time, and mercilessly knocked him out in the rematch. The date of the fight didn't matter. The name of the event didn't matter. This picture right here was all that mattered. And as Adesanya kept winning, people started hoping that Alex Pereira would return to the MMA cage one day. And in the fall of 2021, the reckoning began. <laughs> Alex Pereira entered the UFC, and suddenly, the middleweight champion who had ruled the division for the past few years looked vulnerable. His boogeyman was in the same company as him, and it didn't take long for the UFC to set up the blockbuster fight. We know who's next, that Poatan, Poha. Trust me, the first time I told you, it was an error on my part, spamming right hands, and that was in kickboxing. Part three of combat. This time, inside the world famous octagon, where Israel was the champion and the much more experienced combatant. MMA was a whole different ball game. And in the main event of UFC 281, Adesanya had the perfect opportunity to silence them all. It began well for him, and he was competitive with Poitain in every second of the fight. And by the fifth round, he was on his way to a clear decision victory. But then Pereira reminded him he was no different than before. It all began to crumble. Everything that Adesanya had built in the MMA sphere for the past few years was decimated. His past accomplishment didn't matter anymore because he was never going to escape the shadow of Alex Pereira. With the victory at UFC 281, it seemed like Poitain wasn't just Adesanya's boogeyman, but his apocalypse. You know, there's some athletes that just have other athletes' number. Owen 2 was now Owen 3. He was dealt a defeat in the octagon this time, his home turf. 
but he fared no better than before. Israel just could not defeat him, skill for skill. He was just as good as Pereira, but maybe it was written in destiny, because each time they squared off, whether in the ring or the cage, Israel suffered. At Madison Square Garden, Israel lost his perfect middleweight record, his championship belt, but can you believe the audacity of the man? He didn't lose his confidence. 0-3 and, and Israel was still talking and talking. But this time, I felt like I was there. I was really there. And um, first thing I tell Eugene is, I'm fine. You should have gotten the memo by now. You stay the hell away from your nightmares. Adesanya was demanding a rematch before even leaving the octagon. And at the post-fight press conference. Yeah, I mean, it's another great story for him, but it's not over. This is still war. Not even an hour after the worst moment of his professional career, they laughed at him even more for this nonsense. There was just no way he was winning against Pereira. He had the option of sitting out for a year, wait for someone like Whitaker or Vittori to dethrone Pereira, and then come back to capture the belt. But just a month after the loss, the rematch was announced for UFC 287. In the five months gap between the two events, Israel Adesanya had become one of the most disliked fighter on the roster. With an L on his middleweight record, the missing belt and the history behind the rivalry, there was a lot of ammo to unload against the last outbender. Yeah, I see that rematch. If that rematch happens right away, I see him, uh, uh, Alex, finish him uh, early, early. I believe he's going to do it again. And every word he spoke in the lead up to the fight was mocked and turned into a meme. In the MMA world, underdogs prevail time and time again. Goliaths are brought down every other event, but Israel Adesanya was not just up against the odds. He was up against Alex Pereira, the guy who had beat him thrice. And the fourth chapter was going to be no different. All week long, Adesanya was brief, focused, and waiting to be unleashed. Come on, I'm done with this talk. You guys want to hear me talk or you want to hear me fight? That was all fake bravado. A facade for the broken man as he walked into familiar territory to meet a certain fate. It's like the talking is, we talking can't fight, I can fight, so I'm ready to roll. UFC 287 was going to be the last chapter of Adesanya's combat career. One more shot at this, I put everything on my back, I've done everything in my power to make sure I do the worst thing to this man this weekend. One loss, either a brutal knockout or a controversial split decision, and the former champion was going to fade away from the coveted history book of the sport. History would remember him as the GOAT candidate who lost four times to one guy across two combat sports. That is a brutal rarity. Tomorrow, it's one and done. The last time, ladies and gentlemen! For the fourth time in seven years, Israel Adesanya and Alex Pereira met in the middle for combat. But the hype was just as intense as the first encounter. Without touching gloves, the two champion kickboxer went right at it, and by the sound of the first bell, it looked like the champion was in control, biding his time until the inevitable knockout. The pace picked up in the second act, and towards the end of the round, Poatan marched Adesanya down, cornered him along the fence, and started working his way towards another brutal finish. Or so everyone thought. Everyone but Israel Adesanya. The first right hand that Israel landed surely exercised a lot of demons lurking in his head. And the moment the second shot connected, and Pereira collapsed on the canvas. The nightmare was over, and Israel Adesanya was once again the middleweight champion. Against all odds, against the world, against his apocalypse, Israel Adesanya prevailed. By the end of UFC 287, Israel Adesanya is right where he belongs, in the conversation of the all-time greats. Congrats. We know who he is, we know his style, we know his skill, but the mental fortitude this guy demonstrated cannot be done justice in this video or any other. Very few people willingly march into a nightmare like that with the pressure of the world on their shoulders, but this guy did, and at long last, he came out victorious. At 33 years of age, with a long combat career behind him, this guy won't be around for much more, but it's time we appreciate one of the greatest fighters of all time. Greatest combat sports story in, in UFC history, in my opinion, Israel Adesonia. The hunter now becomes the hunted. All the corny lines are so much cooler now, aren't they?